Hello everybody, as you can see we're back on Amuberry and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a workbench hard drive by just using Amuberry. So this was a requested video by somebody. Uh, they mentioned that they tried using uh, my guide uh, using WinUAE and for some reason it didn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to try exploring uh, what we need to do in Amiberry to set up a workbench hard drive. So things I've done already. As you can see, I've got Amiberry installed and that's installed via the PyKiss um, app there. So I'm on a bog standard version of Raspberry Pi OS and um, I've made the fonts a little bit bigger and as well I've got Conkey uh, display here just showing some information if anybody's wondering what that is on the right hand side. So um, things that I've done so far under games uh, and then I've got some ADFs you can ignore those don't worry about those but under Amiberry folder um, I've made a ADF folder and within there, there's a workbench folder and I've got all of my workbench disks. So you're going to need the workbench 3.1 uh, set. Um, I haven't tested this on workbench 3.1.4, but um, I'm going to be using what comes with the Amiga Forever pack. So yeah, you're going to need your workbench storage, locale, install, fonts and etc. So we've got those in that folder there kickstarts i've got uh, a selection of kickstarts that i've got from the amiga forever pack um the way you can transfer them over to the amiga uh, can be maybe sort of like via a network attached storage which is what i've done or it could be as simple as literally putting them on a usb stick from your uh windows pc and just putting them into the pi and copying them via USB stick. So uh, we've got all of our ROMs. And then what we need to do, the next step is just make a folder called hard drives. Okay. So we've got our folder st structure set up, which is good. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to Amiberry. We're gonna execute Amiberry. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see properly. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the hard drives and CD tab. Uh, and then we're gonna go to create hard file. So uh, I'm gonna create a DH0 uh, drive. It's going to be bootable. Uh, let's find the path to that. So it's under Amiberry, oh, Amiberry hard drives. What am I going to call the file name? I'll just call it system. Nice and easy. So click on that. It adds the HDF uh, file extension on the end. And then we can choose a size for our hard drive. Um, I don't know, let's say something like 250 megabytes, which is plenty of space for just Workbench alone. So we'll click on OK with that and it creates that file. Now it's automatically populated that in here. And what we need to do next is we need to go to uh, floppy drives. Um, I'm just gonna tick all of these down here. I'm gonna put it onto turbo mode just to speed thin things up. Uh, they can all remain right protected. And then it should be a case of going to the three dots for df0 we need to make sure that this first one is uh, under adf's workbench that we select our install.adf so that's selected um, i'm just going to go through and select the others now so the next one is workbench uh, the next one i believe they ask for the locale one next i'll probably get this all wrong um maybe they ask for the extra extras after that 
we'll see. Anyway, we, we can change it anyway. So uh, we've got that all selected. Uh, now, oh, the important thing under the quick start, we don't want an Amiga 500. We want an Amiga 1200. Let's put some extra RAM in there as well. So those are selected. And uh, click on set configuration. So it does set that. Don't forget to click that. That's an important thing. Similar to WinUAE. Um, and you can double check that it's changed all that because under CPU, it should be on an O20, which is um, on 14 megahertz as well. Chipset is AGA. That's good. And ROM that's been selected is uh, 3.0. Actually, we do need to change this. This is a good thing to um, watch out for because sometimes it defaults to the 3.0 ROM and we're installing Workbench 3.1. So that's going to be a mismatch there. So I should be able to go to my drop down and I'm going to select uh, KS ROM 3.1 A1200. So there we go. That's all set up. Uh, we can uh, install, uh, I don't think this is going to affect it too much. Uh, I think we can run with the original UAE. If there's a change, uh, let me know in the comments uh, regards this. But I, I think putting it on original UAE is going to be absolutely fine. So RAM, um, let's, let's bring it up to 8 megabytes for the uh, Zorro 2 fast RAM. And we've got 2 megabytes of chip RAM absolutely fine so i think this setup is all good um so yeah we've got our uh, floppy drive installed ah actually i think going to the quick start it's disabled yeah it's disabled the other floppy drives okay that's another thing to watch out for so if you've done the quick start future mike here apologies i was having microphone issues um it just cut out in this section for some reason so basically I found out that doing the set configuration um, reset a load of things so I'm just going through adding the hard drive file so I need to click on add hard drive file um, just need to make sure that it's on DH0 which I'm just doing now and now we'll go back to the original recording it's good to keep this in because people might come across this problem so i'm just going to keep this in the video so there we go i've pointed to the path of that file that got created for us controller uae is absolutely fine uh, click ok yeah and that's all appeared at the top there right i think we're good to go uh oh one thing that i always do under display Make sure that horizontal and vertical are selected. I'm not going to do anything crazy like full screen at all. I mean, you're welcome to do that and um, and that stuff. But uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to now go press start. And what I'm also going to make sure that I'm doing as well, because I bet it's changed it. If I press F12... Just jump into floppy disks. Yeah, it's changed it to 100 speed. Make sure that's all set on turbo and then resume. Right, there we go. So we got our disks and if we wait a moment, we should see, there we go, our hard drive pop up. It, just, it takes a little, little time for it to pop up. So uh, we'll make sure that that's selected. So single click then hold down right mouse button and then go to icons, format, disk. Okay, we're gonna call this system. We're not gonna use anything fancy like a PFS a file system at all. We'll just use the fast filing system. Uh, we don't need to put a trash can in there at all. And we're gonna do a quick format. And another format again. It shouldn't be too long. There we go. So system, just check in there. Yep, we've got 249 megabytes free. Awesome. And then let's go through and install. So open up install 3.1. Uh, we don't need to use HD tools at all. This would be used if you are using um, a real hard drive 
or if you are using uh, the um, another method of, of, of adding hard drives. But for, for what we're doing, we don't need to touch this at all. Uh, let's go to install. Let's go to English. Obviously, choose the language that you're comfortable with. And apologies again, my microphone cut out again. Uh, so we're just going through a install process. So uh, install release 3.1. Intermediate user, I normally choose that. And then we're going to install for real and none. Click proceed. And yes, uh, make sure that it's installed on system. Um, so we're going back to the original recording now. Apologies for this. Uh, I'm going to just choose English because that's my language. Um, I don't need any printers at all, but if you need any printers, um, yeah, you know, like some printers, just add those if you want. Proceed. I'm using a British keyboard. Proceed. And we'll just wait for this to install. So it should automatically sort of like then load up. Um, we've got the four disks added so far. So hopefully the next one it asks for, I think is fonts, if I remember rightly. Excellent, yes. And the next one it's asking for is fonts. So what we need to do is press F12. Uh, we can eject Workbench because it's already used that. I'm pretty sure it's used the locale one and it's used the extras. So what I'm going to add next is the uh, ADF Workbench. I'm going to add the fonts. I'm going to add the storage. Leave the install one in there because it still needs it right at the end. And then click on Resume. You don't need to click on proceed because it should pick it up. Oh no, you do, sorry, you do need to click on proceed. And there we go, yeah, it's uh, doing all the fonts. And again, the microphone cut out, but basically I'm at the end of the installation. You just need to click proceed. And now the microphone will come back in again. And with the message, we eject all our disks. And then resume. Oh, I didn't catch it in time. Okay, just do a uh, restart. Oh no, restart, restarted our configuration. Oh, <laughs> right. And I bet it didn't save anything. No. Oh, see, right. Okay, I uh, made a mistake. Right, let's let let's load it all back up again. Apologies, everybody. So, quick start. Set the configuration. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, ROM 3.1. RAM 8 gigs. We don't need any floppy drives anymore. We just need our hard drive. So we just go add hard file. Selected the H0 already, which is awesome. And then our drive system HDF. There we go. That's all selected. Awesome. Display. Just make sure to center that. And then click start. There we go. Okay. And we've got Workbench installed. So from there, you should be able to install better Workbench. I'm not going to do that because you should be able to follow that in, in uh, the previous videos that I've made. Uh, I believe it was in part two of my WinUA guide. So go and check that out. So um, there we go. We've got Workbench installed uh, on a hard drive. And yet again, the microphone cut out. Really apologies for this. Um, it was a really good video and sort of like I, I, I was really happy with it. But sadly, um, I, I've got to sort out the microphone. Um, so I've, I've gone with a slightly different setup. But for some reason, the phantom power just keeps on cutting out on my audio interface. 
Um, and also I had problems with DaVinci Resolve. This had real problems this making this video. But um, basically, thank you for watching. Um, I, th I think the audio is going to come back in and I'll just explain. Um, thank you for watching. Obviously, if you've got any questions at all, um, uh, or you want me to do a video on anything else uh, that you uh, would like, uh, or you're having troubles um, getting sorted on the Amiga, then yeah, drop a comment down below. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, obviously give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And I will see you hopefully in another video. Thanks for watching.